Good morning, everyone. It's graduation day for all of you, so congratulations. I'm so proud of you for uh, going through all five sessions. That if you're at this point now, which you all are, that uh, you're going to start creating even more and more things. And, you know, we use this word patient once in a while. And I want each of you to, um, instead of using that word, it kind of feels like, you know, I got to hold back or whatever. Just rather, it's a knowing that everything that you have asked is coming to you. And it's coming to you in perfect portions and perfect timing. And so you are this week, this session will be graduates of top performers and congratulations. And this session we're going to rock the heavens. That It's going to just be awesome that you're going to hear about the fourth law now on when you understand that, that then everything comes together and everything that we have uh, identified um, and discussed and learned in the uh, past four sessions that will all come together in this session and you're going to absolutely love it. And so first of all, I want to uh, thank our, um, our wonderful sponsors who you know, paid for all of this, uh, the, um, the people with, um, uh, that helped you know, like with your assessment that $300 paid for it, uh, with my services and uh, time and, um, and, and expenses and everything. So we'd like to thank Cindy Porter, first of all, and she's just a fantastic loan officer, and I would urge you to continue to uh, work with her, and uh, we've heard some great things with them. Also, PSS Title, and you'll remember Robin, one of our participants, that uh, she couldn't get the deal closed. Uh, couldn't get title on a transaction, so she decided, well, what the heck, I'll go to PSS Title. And I shared with you that they can typically do deals that uh, most other title companies can't. And that's because they know the law better, because they are willing to take a calculated risk. And uh, so PSS Title, that they not only were able to get title, uh, but they were also able to... Um, and with Brittany's help, that uh, they were able to uh, save fifty thousand dollars because there was a attached to the property was a fifty thousand um, uh, dollar cost, a liability, and they found that it actually should not be attached to the property, and that's why they saved fifty thousand dollars. And then to our friends, uh, Advance Rewards Funding, and they've just been awesome. On uh, they give uh, us agents. Uh, uh, they pay us, um, and they give us money, we just need a buy-sell agreement, and they'll wire you in the next day into your checking account uh, money, and it's the cheapest money that you can get in. This is called factoring that uh, you can get. They're about one-fourth the uh, price uh, that the normal price for uh, factoring is. So it's a great way to build your business, especially like if you have a listing um, or a buyer in a really good neighborhood and you want to market that neighborhood before the transaction is done, that's how uh, you can do it. So we appreciate our uh, sponsors with that. And before we get going, does anybody have any out of the blue experiences to share? Um, anything about, you know, referral partners or anything like that? I have you unmuted, so I think all of you can uh, talk. And so... Um, so anybody want to share any some amazing opportunity? I think Sherry, you uh, had something to share. We are actually interviewing five referral partners today. <laughs> that is fantastic. <laughs> so we just finished wow. with one this morning. Our whole team interviewed one. So Beth and I have merged teams. Um, I think you knew that. Oh, congratulations. So that, was, that was one of my goals that I had told you about, but I was missed on one of our meetings. So um, we've merged and yeah. we're a couple weeks into it. It's going awesome. So we oh, have five right. lenders that we've been interviewing, Beth and I. So now the whole team interviewed with one this morning, and then we've got four more this afternoon, and we're going to let the team pick who will be our partner, and all of them oh, want to be. Wow, that's fantastic. And these are mortgage companies? Mortgage companies, yes. Ah, fantastic. And, you know, one of the criteria, because most of us are 
XP, and and I always like to, I love the statement on, you know, it's almost, it really is irresponsible for any agent not to be with the XP because uh, of the, you know, we, all of us came in to serve more people and to, uh, for uh, an income. And so um, there is no other brokerage that offers this uh, ability to um, get with our leads programs that we have uh, to be able to get uh, serve more people. And then the money, uh, you know, nobody uh, offers uh, stock, nobody offers revenue sharing, and, uh, and then again to build your business with your leads. And so um, is one of your criteria with the mortgage people on like how many agents they know or something like that? Yes, actually all of them know about eXp and have sure. approached us and talked about that they had heard about us. They know that we're a growing company. They want to get on board yeah. with us and believe the philosophy and also will help us with the growth of eXp and recruiting agents oh, over that are unhappy. That's fantastic. That is just awesome. And, um, uh, yeah, and, and so, you know, I call that vendors that are eXp friendly. And uh, and all of them, when you say the uh, fastest growing, or <coughs> excuse me, and when you said um, oh, I need to get a drink of water here, <laughs> I got some in Go my ahead. throat. When you while well, you're getting a drink, I'll just say yeah. they are definitely approaching us about EXP and have heard about it, and they're very excited to be a part of EXP and our agents, like not just our team. They want to make relationships with a lot of the EXP agents, so I think they're out there talking to many of them. That's awesome. That's awesome. And and yeah, as far as yeah, are we? You know, we're the fastest growing real estate company in America, and we're now the eleventh largest real estate company in America, and soon to be in the top five or whatever that you know number is. And uh, so yeah, people get it. That's why we we're able to get sync uh, the leads program and conversion and just pay $50 a month for all of the things that, that we have because these vendors are recognizing that we're a force to contend with and if you don't play with us that uh, now and in the future that um, uh, you won't be playing too much because we, we have a lot of business and we're growing the business. So that's fantastic, Sherry. That's uh, it's super. And anything else you want to share? Um, I think that's it for now. We're just excited about our merger that we have and all the new agents that we have on our team. We're up to 10, actually, yeah, 10 or 12. We're interviewing another uh, commercial agent today. So we're growing. We're excited. That's fantastic. That's just great, yeah, to be able to, you know, serve more clients, customers, more people, and then also to be able to really change the lives of agents, and that's what – uh, joining EXP does is it changes the lives of agents, gives them, you know, three those three of uh, revenue, and it's just it puts the fun back into real estate, and there's nothing like fun, and so uh, so congratulations, and that's super, and so uh, let us uh, continue. That I um, uh, wanted to really do a recap because of this is graduation. I wanted to start with uh, just looking at where we've been. And so look at uh, week one, for example, that we, uh, the first session on how we talked about, there's four different zones in which we think in, and three of those zones are red zones. And so, you know, they include us uh, thinking about what we want, but doing it when we're in the midst of it. So, for example, I'm at a listing appointment, and it's not going very well, and then I go, oh, but I really want this to go well. Well, already you have momentum, and this idea about momentum, Sherry just, uh, you know, talked about, yeah, we're just, you know, we're growing, we're, we're getting agents, we're doing more business. That, that's this momentum, and as you get that momentum, and we'll talk about cooperative components will come around, and and because you have that energy going that it'll bring you more agents and more business and more opportunities that are just literally out of the blue that um, uh, for example with me that I have now um, agents in Salt Lake City <laughs> and, I, and I didn't know anybody in Salt Lake City I came over because you know I had a brokership with 400 agents and I was in every major uh, 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 
a market in, in Texas, and uh, and so here I have, I already have three agents in, in uh, Salt Lake City, and so that's what, that, that's how great God is, is that just brings us more when we get that momentum, but it can work the other way, too, on when we're thinking what we don't want, and that's one of those red zones like the committee members, and so remember talking about that, and that in our, in our little mind, in our lower mind, in our analytical mind, if you will, that, that uh, and not our higher self and our higher mind, that we have fear and worry and doubt and complaining and blame and shame and guilt and all that stuff. And so if you're into thinking that, you're going to start momentum in that direction, and you're going to attract more of that stuff, and that stuff isn't very good. And that's why, you know, when people, all of us probably have experienced a bad day, and then we say, it just can't get any worse than this, <laughs> and then it does. <laughs> And so why is that? Well, that's this momentum that's going. And so for us, with our thoughts, that see, we just, we are so fortunate, so blessed to be able to take all the energy in the universe, if you will, and based on our thoughts, we can manage that energy and turn that energy into what we want to be, do, and have. And that's why thoughts become things. And that's how powerful that you are and why you just want to observe on mainly your feelings, and we're going to talk about emotional intelligence today, that, that we're going to talk about our, our feelings because you really don't have to monitor your thoughts. You just monitor your feelings. And we'll get more into that. But when you're feeling bad, that means, you know what, I'm getting off this topic or the way that I'm thinking about this topic or subject, and I'm going to start thinking about more about what I do want. And so, uh, so that was week one, and and you know, and we introduced the joy shop in that week, and that is so important because the joy shop is is really the um, uh, the the basis, one of the the best strategies that you can use, and and really tactics, if you will, to be able to every morning read that joy shop, and just as a reminder to you that that joy shop that we can. Um, uh, I have other joy shops that can help you, like uh, 15 Minutes to Happiness and, and just a whole bunch of great joy shops. And what they are is good feeling thoughts. And what that does is by reading that, you read those good feeling thoughts and it starts raising your vibration. It starts raising your point of attraction to the things that you do want. And so just imagine, like, take your right hand right now and just stretch out, reach it up to the right, uh, you know, going up to the sky, and just reach out and say, you know, and ask, I want to have the next better feeling thought, and just reach up and reach for that better feeling thought, and that what will happen is you're going to start getting, receiving godly thoughts. So they're not your thoughts, they're coming from God to help you to get to where you are. Because your analytical concrete mind is only there to identify what you want. And the way that w plays out is we go through life and there will always be contrasts. Okay, there will always be an agent that says no or a client or, or a deal that goes south or whatever. However, those are purposely put there in your path to help you birth new ideas of what you really do want. And that's why you want to bless the contrast, the things you don't like, the things that didn't work out right that, uh, the way that you wanted them. And so you want to bless that because what it does is it reaches and takes you to the next level of thought and the next level of feeling. And as you feel good, you're aligned with your soul. You are living your soul's life. You are aligned with God. And so that's why all of this just plays in. And, and sometimes we just take for granted our thoughts and our feelings or we try to even hide our feelings. And the fact is that these emotions are really really the creator of all that, that we have. And so back to that joy shop. So to listen to that, read that joy shop and to start raising up those feelings to a higher point. And anything that you don't want, just stop looking at that's happening to you right now that you don't like. Stop looking at it. Because whatever you focus your attention on, grows. And so you want to focus your attention on the things that you want, the things that, that will be. So 
And some people say, like, ah, oh, Dr. Hank, you know, you're like an ostrich. Stick your head in the sand. Oh, no, 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 my head is in the sand. My head is in the clouds. My head is in heaven. And that I am attracting these better and better feeling thoughts that then start manifesting and turning those thoughts into my creations and into the things that I do want. And so in the joy shop, after you read that, then you write down what you desire, what do I want? And this will help you to gain clarity. A godly word is clarity, that when you have clarity about you, your purpose, why you're here, what you want to do, that that clarity comes by you getting, start writing down on what do I want, and you'll start to discover, and you'll start to unravel, if you will, and, and, and you'll start being this, this pioneer in the sky. Of, of being able to attract better and, and greater feeling uh, thoughts about what you want and more clarity about what you want. And then the second thing you write down is you write down what you appreciate. And so this literally helps you. Remember, I'm a mental scientist and so a head doctor. And so what, what this does, that process is Instead of us, we have been literally trained to look at what's not working good, okay? We've been trained to, when we turn on the TV, we watch the news, and they have all these things that, you know, have happened. But, you know, it's a handful of things. It's 20 things, whatever, on the news in a half hour. And there are billions of wonderful things that happen during the day. And those things they're just pointing out is contrast to what you don't want. And so we're used to, you know, talking to people about, you know, what's not working out right, and someone's sick, or someone died or whatever we look at you know we even look at death as sad and death is a celebration and that yeah you know, all of us go from the non-physical to the physical and then back into the non-physical but if you think that your relatives so take your grandmother your loving grandmother who you love who has transitioned into the non-physical that if you say that she's gone then she'll be gone, and she won't be able to be there to help you. But if you say, my grandmother's right here with me right now, and you can feel her presence if you ask that, that and ask her for guidance. She can help take you because she has no resistance anymore. She's in a pure state of allowing, and she is one of those that knows where you are, where you want to go, and the path of least resistance to get there. And so you have angels, you have all that is that, that are loving you, supporting you, guiding you. And so for you to really embrace that and so to start thinking appreciation and writing down in that second step of what do I appreciate? And so, you know, I appreciate that, that, you know, just hearing Sherry this morning, you know, she appreciates on on uh, getting, you know, more agents. She appreciates on having five referral appointments today because one of the things for, again, for EXV agents to attract uh, agents is one of the things you do is you line up with, you ask for vendors to help you because vendors know agents. And there's no greater gift than I know to give an agent than to share the EXP story, and at least for their understanding, their education on where the industry is going, and then their understanding on how this can benefit them and their families and the world. And so this state of appreciation, and then just appreciate, I mean, there are so many, there's endless things since this morning that you can appreciate. You woke up, right, and your heart's beating. You can hear, you can say, you have your five senses working. I mean, it's just a miracle. It's amazing. You have this mind of yours. And your mind, what I'm, I have actually taught you to do now, is to start connecting with God's mind. And so by feeling good, that helps you so that you can now be the receiver of those godly thoughts. And so I had a person the other day that said, yeah, and in, in one of our top performers that said, um, oh my gosh, you know, I all of a sudden had a thought of uh, to contact this one lady, and I hadn't contacted her in a couple of years, whatever, and so I contacted her, and she goes, oh my goodness, I was just thinking about you, we have, you know, this house that we want listed, and, you know, we want you to help us with it, and it's like, and then we want to go buy another house, so it was like, you know, all of this wealth and abundance, and where did that thought come from? And that, those are these godly thoughts that it being guided, and instead of you trying to figure out the how. So stop trying to figure out how to do stuff. Instead, focus on here's what I want, here's why I want it, and then I'm going to trust that God is going to do, the Father is going to do the work for me. 
And so those are Christ's terms, right? The Father shall do the work for me. And so in our terms, you know, nowadays, it's get out of the how. And so as you start this appreciation and you start looking at what you appreciate, it automatically tells God, the universe, I want more of it. Woo! <laughs> I love that. And, uh, and then the third thing is you're going to prepave your day. And so prepaving your day, that means that, hey, you wake up this morning and you say, you know what, I'm going to get out, out, out of bed on the right side of the bed. I'm going to do a, just an amazing joy shop. I'm going to feel so good that I'm going to attract myself to delicious and healthy food, that I'm going to attract harmonious people, that I'm going to attract miracles today. I'm going to attract more business opportunities today. I'm going to allow more money to flow powerfully and easily into my checking account today. And as you start just saying all these without the resistance of, oh, there's no way and I don't have any deals closed and then whatever, that as you start saying that, you're going to start allowing God, because you trust God that much, to just allow God to start bringing you all of the things that you want. And so it's just an incredible, incredible path. So that was week one, and that really set us off in order to start creating the things that we want. And uh, in week two, we, we discovered our, our, uh, uh, our, our, the four different behavior styles of mankind. And, and, um, uh, and what was interesting about that, I just had the lady yesterday from Top Performers, and uh, actually she's from Houston, but she's with the Austin group. And, uh, and she was telling me that, yeah, she just didn't believe uh, the, the assessment, some of the stuff on the assessment. So she went and had dinner with her ex-husband. <laughs> and I went like, wow, really? <laughs> and, yeah, she had dinner with her ex-husband. And she showed the assessment to her ex-husband because she knew that he really did know her very well and they'd been married for a lot of years, whatever. And said, you know, I'd like to take, uh, have you take a look at this and tell me, is this really me? And he, and he reads some of the points that, you know, she highlights. And he goes, oh, yeah, that's you. <laughs> and so, so then she just accepted on, and to start loving who you are and to love the magnificence that each one of you are. That, that this, this, you know, guilt of the past or you didn't have this or, you know, your upbringing was this way or somebody was bad or you had a bad incident or whatever, just leave that and let, let that go bye-bye. Let that just flow right out of your mind in between, from one ear to the other ear and then out, and just let it go. And then just start thinking about, and you know, I shared with you on how to start really looking at your past, that taking five years and every five years to start creating uh, and, and thinking about what happened good in that five years. And you'll be able to find some amazing, wonderful things that happened good. And what it'll do is it'll start helping you to look at your life the way God looks at your life. And that has all been a blessing. And, uh, and then we looked at motivators, and this is really a key, and none of you have seen this before. Some of you have seen the different behaviors, but there's six different ways that people make decisions. And if you're just talking your way like utilitarian return on investment, and if they're individualistic, that they want to be the best, that they'll tell you they want the big house up on the hill, and you tell them, but you won't get a good return on investment, and they don't care. They want to be the best. And so to recognize that there's these six different, and I would suggest you go through that again and the power of this. By the way, most people that actually go through this process, top performers the second time, get way more out of it because they're in more of a state of allowing. Because all, my only words that I'm channeling all of this, like I don't have an agenda, I'm not reading you know, anything, that, that this just, I channel all this because these are the perfect words and thoughts for you to help you discover and realize what a magnificent creator you are and how worthy you are. And we'll get uh, to that a little bit later about uh, how to recognize and declare your your uh, worthiness. And then in uh, Success Unit 3, we, we looked at beliefs, and we found that um, that we have some beliefs that just aren't true, okay? If you say you're bad with names or if you say, you know, uh, uh, if you can't imagine, like I went and did the calculator on if you recruit 40 people and then each one of them for the next five years just recruit three people, 
$48 million a year. And I was uh, telling one of my people, actually the Salt Lake City guy, that um, that then kind of team leader now that I have up there, and and uh, and I was telling him, you know, I'm not going to show people this because most people can't accept that because they have this view on, well, this is what my parents did, and this is what I do, and that, and so just go beyond, and so to ask to expand your imagination. And again, we're going to get more into that this morning too. But I ask, and so I want you to write down this, that I ask to expand my imagination, more of what I want to do, more opportunities, more miracles. There's miracles happening all around you. We're just not open to it. So we we are just in the state of whatever we perceive. I literally live just this miraculous life, and the miracles are popping all the time. Like right now, I'm I'm looking down on this beautiful forest, and I'm just seeing these different colors of green on uh, on the forest and the trees, and you know it's just amazing. There's so much of everything, as many clouds as I can see right now, as as big as the sky is, as many um, leaves there are on the trees. That's the abundance. That's what you are made of. That's what you are supposed to be, if you will. And so this abundance of money and happiness, and you deserve it all. It's just our beliefs got in our way. And then we were told, and they, you know, had good intentions, whatever, but they just told us a lot of things that, you know, really weren't true. And, you know, I've studied the religions, and, you know, all the religions that, that, you know, they basically say the same thing and know that we're all connected uh, with this cord, connected with this cord of, of love and growth and of freedom and of joy. And so that's why, you know, you'll notice that I put on my emails, um, you know, I'll do love Dr. Hank, you know. And, and, you know, most people are like, what is this guy? <laughs> and that, well, you may not re recognize it, but I love you and you love me. And the only reason why that wouldn't be true is any resistant thoughts that you know you might have about me or relationships or, or you know whatever. And so, uh, so anyways, it's a glorious uh, life, and for us to now start identifying new beliefs and the new beliefs that you are independently wealthy, new beliefs that you can do, be, and have everything that you want. So as you just get into all of that and recognize that, man, this is such a great, great life. And then we went into prioritizing the fourth session, and that's where we uh, uh, looked at like monthly planning. And again, a great tactical uh, move, strategic planning, strategic thinking, where you really start laying out and you start prepaving. Hey, how do I want my month to be? So July, and and I want you to right now go to your calendar or whatever you have, or write a note about it that. Uh, at the end of the month, the last weekend or the last couple of days, invest two hours and to look at July. If you intend to have your future, specifically July 2017, which you're only going to have one time, if you intend that to be the best July you've ever had, to do that monthly planning. And it'll get you right on the road to identifying what you want. If you don't ask for it, ask and you shall receive. And if you don't ask for it, it's impossible for the universe to give, to give it to you, for God to give it to you. And, um, uh, and so that, that then took us to today. And, um, and the path to all of your desires is actually an emotional path. And... Um, as we uh, look, we're going to uh, look at our agenda, and so now I'm on the screen, if you want to look at the screen. Uh, um, we're going to look at an amazing recap of our journey together. Well, we actually did that, and again, the way that it was done, that I had no idea other than uh, I, I knew that God was just going to flow all that uh, to me. And then that um, all of our desires are manifested emotionally, and so we'll We'll look at that. It's our all powerful emotions. And so I've told you thoughts turn into things. There's something in the middle of that. And it's those thoughts actually turn into energy. And that energy turns into things. And then to look at we're vibrational beings. And we'll look at it. So we're going to look at a scale of different vibrations of uh, things that you don't want 
and uh, and use words to do that, and then vibrations that bring you what you do want. And so again, God knows everything that you have asked for, and it's all a matter of having these good feeling thoughts, these good feeling vibrations of what you do want. So you're going to literally see a scale now. Of you just keep those vibrations and then see another scale on the vibrations you don't want, and you'll have everything the heavens shall part for you. And, uh, you know, all of you have already discovered, uh, wow, this happened and this happened. Some of you have said, oh, yeah, it was just by coincidence. You know, and there are no coincidences. You've created it all. And and just a word about that, that, you know, the people, some people, most people actually think that they don't really create everything. And But it's this idea about cooperative components, that if you're thinking, if you've watched the news and you're seeing car accidents, and wow, you get real emotional about, gosh, I hope I don't get into a car accident. And then, um, you know, you're driving down the city, it, 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 down the street, and maybe even that day you said, well, you know, I want to have my travels to be easy and smooth, but with little emotion in it. And then you had all of that fear emotion about getting into a car accident. That then you're driving down the street, and then you get in the car accident. You say, hey, I didn't ask for a car accident. And, oh, yes, you did. That you asked through those emotions and through that fear of, of that nothing's going to happen. Like I'm traveling now. You know, this year I've already been to Dubai. I've been to Egypt. Um, in two weeks, I I go to uh, to Ireland, and uh, you know when people say to me, "Oh my God, you know it's dangerous over there," and you know it's like nothing's dangerous. That I create my experience. That I don't care what war is going on or whatever. That. I create what I want. When I joined the Army, I said, hey, I, uh, and it was in the middle of the Vietnam War, and I said, hey, I want to experience war. I want to do that, but I want to remain alive. And I did. And so I, I came back alive and in one piece. And um, uh, and so so this idea, though, about us thinking that um, – that some stuff happens to us that we didn't, you know, really create, that it just didn't happen. You just aren't aware of your feelings and those feelings of what you created. And usually, so, uh, you know, I brought up the word fear. And so that fear is the second most powerful energy that there is. And so that's why, you know, these fears, wow, they can, they can uh, manifest pretty quickly. The good news is the most powerful emotion that there is, is love. And so you can trump everything, you know, you can overcome any fear or whatever with just by love and loving thoughts of you being safe and happy and loved. And, um, you know, some people I'll put a, a protective shield around them and, uh, and to protect them, a golden shield and light around them to protect them. And I do put that shield on there metaphorically. Morphically, it, it, you know, metaphysically, that I, I put that around there, but it's mainly because of their belief that because I did that for them, that they believe that, and then they go out and they're happy ever after. Uh, I heal people like with cancer all the time. Just did it again, I don't know, two weeks ago, and uh, and I just put little love guys in there, Pacmans, little love Pacmans in there, and and they uh, just go doing their love stuff on all the cells to include those cells and uh, and so we have the power to overcome anything and I'm living proof of that you know it, 10 months ago I was in a major car accident that um, total my car and total my body I have been proclaimed uh, permanently homebound and permanently disabled and uh, and I'm walking around and you know for, for the most part better health than I had before and more miraculous opportunities of both those things I asked for when, when that happened. But literally, my angels saved me, you know, from that. But what that did is it slowed me down to recognize some amazing opportunities and one of them EXP. And so it was, a, you know, pretty violent. And, and, yeah, well, God had to slow me down somehow. And that was the only way to do it is I was, you know, off doing stuff and thinking that I had uh, that I knew all the opportunities out there, and I didn't. And so I was able to see those opportunities. And so, in fact, we are the, uh, the creators of our experience 
all of it, so take credit. And that even includes you picked your parents. And I know some of you are saying, well, I mustn't have had a very long time to, you know, choose my parents then. <laughs> and the fact is your parents are just perfect. They gave you the perfect contrast in order to be the magnificent being that you are right now. And then we're going to... Um, look at next steps to take you beyond your imagination. So that's what we got cooking today, and I wanted to first share with you and to understand that, you know, we call ourselves human beings or, or whatever, and, um, uh, and really what we are is we're vibrational uh, beings, that we have these vibrations, uh, this energy, and we actually create those energies. So everything in the universe, everything around you is energy. When you look at your hand, that, you know, it looks like it's this, this solid piece of matter. And the fact is there's actually more air in between there than uh, in between your cells and there are cells. And so, again, that we can't trust our five senses, but there is a sense our sixth sense that we can trust. And again, that's our feelings, good or bad. And so we are energy, and so we're not only surrounded by energy, but we are energy, and we create and direct energy with our thoughts. We're the only ones to be able to do that, that other animals, that, you know, animals, living creatures that are around us, around us that, um, that they are unable to use their thoughts to create their future, and they're just into the moment, which is awesome. And so I love my little Bella. She's a little dog. She's into the moment. She's not thinking one iota about, am I going to get breakfast tomorrow, and do I have enough money in the bank, or any of that stuff. And, uh, and so it's up to us, so we can live happy like Bella and your dog, or, you know, uh, your animal or think of a pet you had or this unconditional loving person like your grandparents that you have or had and and that when you you look at them that you say oh, man you know that that um you know why can't i be like that and you can and i'm teaching you how is that when when things happen that you know like for example when a thought happens gee i don't have enough money in the bank you immediately say to yourself that's what i don't want what do i want and that will then birth, I want to have more money to flow to me, that God is abundant, I am abundant, I, I, I deserve, I am deserving, I am worthy of abundance, that I now call forth and ask for amazing and new uh, miraculous opportunities to come and bring me all of the things that I desire to include money, because money is just freedom, and I love freedom, and I'm one of the principal reasons of me is here for more freedom and so thus I want and I declare right now and I call forth that freedom or that more business or the more money or, or the better relationships or the better health that we can create and direct this energy of the universe with our thoughts and that's why we stand in the center of the universe so each one of us are in the middle of the universe you say how can that be I'm here and you're over there and I said that can be because I have the power and you have the power to be able to, with our thoughts, create the type of cooperative, harmonious energy of whatever we're thinking. And it'll bring us more of that energy to us. And that's why we get our cup overfloweth, as the Bible say, our cup overflow. What does that mean? Once you get that momentum going, those good feeling thoughts going, that as you do, like I just did on money, that as you do, and, and freedom, that as you do, that cooperative components will come, and they'll just bring you amazing opportunities that you could have never, ever figured out. So stop trying to do the how, put your trust in God, and then just say, you know what, I'm getting this. And all of you, I ask for all of you to have open minds today, to have open hearts today, open souls today, and that you're really awakening. I ask to, that you be enlightened today, and you are starting to enlighten and recognize this magnificent creator that you are and this power that has been bestowed upon you with thoughts that you are the kingdom and the kingdom is within you and you can control all of that through your beautiful, glorious thoughts. So let's talk about the fourth universal law. And before we do, last uh, session, 
we talked about the three universal laws. And so the first one was that you're a creator. And this answers many questions about what's my purpose here? You know, am I supposed to, am I paying off some debt? Do I got some karma going on that I got to be nice now because I wasn't nice before? Do, do I got to earn myself, you know, work myself into a place called heaven? And all of that stuff is no. <laughs> you're in either heaven or hell right here and and through your entire existence and consciousness whether you're in this physical um, a, a, a time space reality or you're back into the non-physical that you experience heaven or hell depending on what you're thinking and where you're you're at and so um, so so it is why are you here you're here to create you're cre here to create what? In general, overall terms, you're here to create more growth, and that happens all the time because we have perfect contrast in this world. We have everything we don't want and everything we do want. And then w when we rub up against something we don't want, that bursts new ideas, and it gives us more clarity, and it gives us more energy and more emotions towards here's what I want. This is why I want this, that... Um, I, uh, uh, there's all kinds of examples that happen, but one that comes to mind is uh, Draymond Green, that he's a guy that pays for Golden State and, and a basketball player, and his neighborhood that, uh, you know, it was just the, the, the worst neighborhood, the most troubling neighborhood that, you know, he would get beat up, he'd go to the a crappy little recreation center, little gym, little uh, outdoor place, and they'd beat him up, you know, and, and he just would get up and he'd say, no, I'm going to play basketball. <laughs> you know, was this little kid at the time, and he said, no, I'm going to play basketball and I'm going to be good. And so that contrast that he had made him one of the best basketball players, now world champion, whatever, uh, you know, And but that happens with all of it. That's why you want to bless it and you say, yeah, bring on that contrast because that's going to birth these amazing amazing determination for me and, and this amazing energy and force that overcomes any and everything. It doesn't matter what's going on in the world. It only matters what's going on in your world, in your head, with your emotions, that you can change the whole world. And we've seen many, many people do that. Martin Luther King, that, you know, the list is long. Gandhi, that Christ, that the list is long. Uh, people that were determined and said, yeah, this, I want to teach the truth. And so, you know, there is the freedom there. And, and, and we are the freedom. And we can call it the way we want and change all circumstances, all prejudice. It doesn't matter what sex we are, what color we are, what our education. None of that matters, that you can create anything that you want. And so that's the first law is that you're this magnificent creator. The second law that we talked about is only well-being flows to us. And do you know how how just amazing that is, that, that phenomenal that is? To, well, because what it's saying is there's nothing working against you, okay? There's nothing that, no power, no nothing that is is trying to prevent you from anything that you want. Only your own committee thoughts are doing that. The only devil in the world is that. Only well-being flows, which means that with your, if you have resistant negative thoughts, you can close that well-being off. You can't close it off all the way, but you can close it off to the point where you will then look at the world and say, wow, this is a bad world. And or you can allow the well-being to flow, and then you can see what uh, us Christians say in Christ's eyes that you can start seeing the world as it truly is. This beautiful, remarkable world with with all the contrast of what we want and what we don't want to birth all the things that we do want, give us more clarity, and then again, our purpose here is for more growth and then more more. Uh, uh, freedom, okay, so more growth, we're here for more growth, more freedom, but the prize is more joy. So when you're happy, like when you get God bumps, or you call them goose bumps, I call them God bumps, you start calling them God bumps now, that when you get God bumps, that's just all that energy, that well-being of energy flowing, saying, man, you are aligned with me. God's saying, you are aligned with me. <laughs> and, um, 
Uh, and so, so first law, you're uh, this amazing creator. Second law, you, only well-being flows. And then the third law is, and we talked about a couple times today, are these cooperative components. These cooperative components rally around your thought that then turns into this emotion that rallies into this, the, into what, wherever you're at. And so that's why when you all of a sudden get, uh, I had someone yesterday email me and said, yeah, that, um, you know, I, I called on a lead from conversion and it happened to be an agent and I told the agent about ESP and they want to join. <laughs> and it's like, wow, that's cool. Use conversion to, you know, attract agents. But why not if you're open to it? So if you're allowing you can do all kinds of different things and be able to, to have all the things that, that you want. So first, second, and third, we have the, the, the three that, oh, that cooperative components surround everything. And now the fourth universal law. And so before we came here that uh, again, okay, before we came here again, that um, we said to God, you know, like, so, so tell me, how, how do we communicate? Are we going to, you know, use English or we're going to use Spanish or what are we going to do? And uh, so God said, oh, no, no, I have, a, I have the perfect way in order for us to communicate to make sure you're on your path, on your lighted golden path. I have the perfect way to communicate. And you say, really? Cool. What is that? And so God, our source, our soul communicates with us through our feelings. So when you feel bad, that's God knocking on your door within, the kingdom within, knocking on your door and say, hey, really, this is not the way I'm thinking about this, and get off of this. Either think about this differently or think of a new subject or go take a nap or go take a walk in the park, but don't be thinking about this subject the way that you are. You feel bad, and it's not getting you. It's not taking you to what you want. And uh, I have a little background here, so I'm going to mute you guys. But if you want to uh, talk, uh, let me know. Um, and um, uh, and so, so thus, when we feel bad, we're thinking away from God. When we feel good, and when we feel good, that means we're thinking the way God is thinking about this. And so we talked about momentum last time. And so I really want you to get back into, yeah, what this momentum, that when I'm thinking something good or when something good happens to me, remember what happens when, when you just got a client, for example, or you just recruited an agent? What happens? What do you say? You go, yes! Right? And so right now I want you to stand up and go, yes! And so as you get that energy, think of something that really happened good to you this past week. And there's lots of things because you're in this process and you're now thinking more as God is thinking about you and your life and what you want. And then just say, think about that great thing, the new agent, the great conversation, the great time making love, whatever it is. And then say, yes! And that gets that energy going, and so you want to milk that momentum. So as you get rolling, as you start talking, thinking about, yeah, I just love on how my business is growing. I love on how my revenue share is growing. I love on how my relationships are getting deeper and more meaningful. And I love on how that physically that I'm just feeling better. I'm looking better. And I know Kevin's on that line right now. And that guy is looking better right now. He's dressing better. He comes in a suit and he's, he's he lost weight and he's just feeling good. He's at the top of the world. And you take that momentum and you just keep on going with that momentum. And that you'll see that what will happen is these cooperative components come in and will give you even more and more of what you want and in ways that you had never even imagined yet because God's going to take you beyond your current imagination to thinking new thoughts and ideas and wanting new desires and coming up with, with new solutions that because every time that you have a challenge there is always a solution. You just need to know that, breathe deeply and to allow it in. Amen? Yeah, we're going now. So um, we're going to look at now the uh, actual uh, way of, um, of desires being manifested emotionally. And so you're a leading edge creator. Those thoughts create an emotion, a vibration. 
And then that emotion sends out a signal to your source. And your source receives that immediately. God receives that immediately and answers immediately. And so you're sitting there in this, let's call it a vortex of just this energy, is everything that you want is actually here right now. You just can't sense it with your five senses because your sixth sense, you haven't allowed it in. You haven't received it in. So your answers are in energy form. And as you, you know, a bit and really allow, you have to ask first, but then allow it, believe it, and then expect it. And when you do emotionally, you let all the things that you wanted in. And so we're going to look now at the emotional scale of what you don't want. So I shared with you that we're going to look at this emotional scale. We're going to look at here's the things that if you have these emotions, you want to be aware of them. You don't have to necessarily track your thoughts. You want to be aware of your emotions. And if you have these emotions, that you want to change your thinking about whatever that subject is or stop thinking about that subject. And so negative emotion tells us that we're not thinking about this properly, that we're looking at this differently than God is looking at it. It tells us that we're off track, that we're not on our lighted path. It tells us that we're cutting ourselves off to the resources that we want. And what resources? I shared with you in the non-physical, there are angels, there are all that is, there's you know what most of us call God. All of those things are sitting here and 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 able to help us to to achieve and be do and have of, of what we have. And but we cut ourselves off of those resources when we're not feeling good. So there, there's everyone that has walked before us is there. And, and ready to help you. And so think of some amazing, or if they're even here, you can just ask them, hey, give me guidance on this. And they won't consciously be aware of that, but they can give you, you guidance on that. In fact, that happened yesterday where someone said, hey, you know, I need uh, some answers to some things. And then a little bit later on, oh, never mind, I, I got them. Because you asked and then you were given the solutions, and probably a better solution than I even could have gotten <laughs> or given. And um, so we're resisting are good. We're resisting God. We're resisting our full intent of how we expected to live in this life. We expected to have this be just a, a wonderful trip, skipping along down our journey, these pioneers going to all that is, expanding all that is, the new thoughts that have never been there, new emotions that have never been there, and just enjoying our ride and taking that contrast and saying that week that contrast is it's what I don't want and what's it going to birth me it's going to birth me this new idea that take me to where man has never been before where God has never been before and that's why God is so happy with this because we just expand all that is so looking at those emotions that uh, the kind of the bottom line on it is and, and like about the worst of the worst is when you feel disempowered and so have you ever felt disempowered? I remember when I was a kid, my brothers held me down. And uh, this was in the summer up in Wisconsin. They held me down. They put their knees on my arms, so I'm on my back, and they, they got their, their knees on my arms. And then the other brother, the older brother, takes his knees on my head so I can't move my head. And then they pull little grass out. They take grass out from the lawn. And then they stick it in my nose, and they call it Chinese torture. And they're laughing away and everything, and I am, like, pissed. And I am trying with all my might to get them off of me. And I have all their weight, and, you know, their older brothers are much bigger than me, et cetera. And I'm just trying to pull myself, you know, on there. And finally, I had to give up. And I felt so awful. And it's the first time that I felt disempowered. And it was God telling me. You know, you, you're not disempowered. You are this powerful creator. But at the time, I felt disempowered. And so, you know, to this day, I remember that. Like, it happened yesterday, okay? But in my story of when I was, 
in my first five years. My story is I just loved that I was walking with my dad to the circus, and I couldn't wait to go to the circus. We were outside this huge building. It was a small Milwaukee arena, but we're outside this huge building, and then walking in, and I asked for cotton candy, and my dad gave me cotton candy, and man, I just ate the cotton candy and watched the circus show. So that's my new story, because that other story I told you about my brothers, that doesn't do me any good, right? So this feeling of being disempowered, of having fear, false evidence appearing real, of being unworthy, feeling unworthy, you are the most worthy essence being there is in the universe not just in this world, but in the universe. And then it's what it's doing. It's creating what you don't want. There's guilt. There's shame. There's despair. There's anger. There's being worried. There's concern. There's doubt. And, like, let's go back to that anger thing that most psychologists, that um, they'll put you on a couch and say, well, now, tell me, let's go ahead and dig up what the problem is. And you'll dig up for years, okay? There's never, there's no end to whatever you want to dig up and do, you know, and, and have that, that, that it doesn't help you at all on digging up and trying to figure out what happened and how we're going to do it better because all the circumstances are different. I'm at a different energy, et cetera. And so, when they're sitting at most psychologists' couches and the people start getting angry, they say, don't get angry, you know, settle down. And I say, no, get really angry. In fact, I want you, if you're angry about something right now, you see, it's a higher emotion than being disempowered. And that's why anger is good. So if you're pissed at something, go get a pillow and beat the hell out of it in the bedroom. Go, you know, grab a pillow, go in your bedroom, close the door, beat the hell out of that pillow and get that because that is way more satisfying than being dis disempowered. But now we're working up and we come to worry and concern and doubt and negative expectancy and emotion. So if you think, oh, no, this is really how it is. This is, you know, this never works out. When I'm with this person, they do this or they're not cooperative or whatever. And, and you continue to fight for your lack and limitation of what you don't want. You're the creator. You're the power. So you say, no, I'm not going to negatively expect anything anymore. I don't care how it was before. I now recognize I'm this creator, and I can go create what the hell I want to create. <laughs> and so thus you do. And so, so and, and you just, and you do it gently and lovingly and easily. It's this, it's this, uh, to get like your emotions, to float your emotions right up with God and that energy of God, that it's subtle. It's this just beautiful, subtle energy of just love and feeling and just going up to this beautiful place. So again, negative expectancy gets you negative outcomes. And then work. Just get rid of that word work. You know, it's just no fun. I'm going to go play today. I'm going to go play. I'm going to go play with my clients. I'm going to go help my clients, whatever. But get rid of that word work. You know, it's just not a very good thing. You don't have to work hard. You've all been told. We're told every day. I watch Sports Center, like the top ten, and then they say, oh, it's because I worked real hard. And it has nothing to do with working real hard. It has everything to do. The first point where all of those people did is they got their mindset on, hey, this is what I want. And because of that mindset, God led them then to do whatever, to exercise, to work out, to practice a lot, whatever, you know, that is. But it's the joyous ride of doing it. It's the journey. There, it's impossible to have a happy ending without a happy journey. And so lighten up and recognize, yeah, I'm just going to lighten up. I'm going to be easy on myself. I'm going to love myself. I'm going to see the world in Christ's eyes. I'm going to love the world. I'm going to love all people. I know that everybody is alpha to the omega. This world and experiences are alpha to the omega, and I'm going to call forth the alpha of what I want and not the, 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 the omega of what I don't want. And so we just start flowing with all this, and you start loving yourself and doing it. And all of this is resistance. So when I bring up and have shared with you, you know, it's just your resistant thought. It's these thoughts. And so, so it's these emotions, okay, that, that 
cut you off from your source, that cut you off from all the resources. And, and your uh, old beliefs on, you know, I had someone say, well, in the Bible it says, you know, it's a sin to, to, um, uh, to talk with your angels. You know, what the hell? First of all, the Bible can tell you every, anything you want, that gay is good, gay is good, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter what the subject is. And, and Alpha to the Omega, okay, everything is. And, that, um, and, and then they don't understand what sin is. Sin is an arch return back in Christ's time that means uh, you're simply off target. You're not thinking the way that God is thinking about the subject. So that's your only sin that you have. And to get out of that sin is just start thinking on the bullseye. And what's the bullseye? Good feeling thoughts. And there you go. And so it's this resistance. And so what you want to do is 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 not say, gee, I don't want to be resistant anymore because you'll get resistance, right? But it's that, you know what, I'm going to catch myself. If I'm ever in this stuff, I'm just going to get out of it. There's nothing to be angry about because, you know, like people say, oh, I'm so mad at my ex. And I'm sitting there saying, you know, you're you're all mad at your ex. Or you're all mad at this client or, you know, whatever. And, you know, that, that ex or that client or whoever it is, they're out having a great time not even thinking about you. You're creating your own experience. And so you're getting upset about something that, you know, it's just upsetting you. You're allowing that other person, so you're giving that other person that you don't like power to upset you. Nobody is going to spoil my day, and everybody's going to make my day. <laughs> and uh, so that's the emotional scale of what we don't want. Now, the emotional scale of what we do want. And so this is where we want to just flow in positive emotions tells me that I'm thinking about this correctly. And what does correctly mean? The way God is. I'm looking at this as God looks at it. I'm on track. I'm on my lighted and golden path. And write that down. I am on my lighted and golden path. And, you know, I'd write that down and I'd put it on the refrigerator. Again, I'm channeling this. So these are words for you. That, that and put that on on your uh, on the refrigerator and put it in if you have my time management system put it in your my time in a month at a glance that you know just get emerged in it and you know put it on your rearview mirror or whatever that don't don't put it all the way to where you can't see what you what you're backing into but um, you know but put it everywhere so that you just uh, start saying yeah that you know that I'm on my lighted and golden path I just love that. And I'm allowing all of the resources I desire to now help me. I'm aligned with God. I'm aligned with my source, with the universe. I am aligned with my full intent of what I do want. And so the emotions, it's creating what you and God want. And so, you know, some people say, well, I'm waiting for God to give me an answer, whatever. Good luck. You know that 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 uh, to tell me what to do. Okay, that you're the one asking. You shall receive. You do the asking. In the middle of receiving, God does the work, and then you do the receiving and you do the allowing of it. And so, whatever you want, God wants. And so, when you're feeling good, that's where God is, and that you guys are at one together. There's hope, and again, this is at the bottom of the positive emotional scale. Hope isn't as, as good as knowing, okay? Like, I know this teaching is the truth. I know that this plays out to give people more of what they want to be, do, and have. I know this is God's path, and I know this is, you know, godly what I teach. And so knowing is way more, well, I hope it's right. <laughs> but hope is a hell of a lot better than no hope. And so that's why I have it in there. And uh, uh, let's see, Sherry asked, uh, here, I'm going to unmute you. And uh, uh, Sherry, uh, what did you ask? Can you, or write in. Go ahead. You talk. Hello. Hello. Mic's not on. I know, but you, uh, I turned it on. You guys are all on. Uh, just write it down. Uh, uh, type it in again to me. Uh, and... Um, you're all on muted, so you can do it. Okay, well, I don't know. She, she's uh, not getting there, but but you can write it again uh, if you do it. When you type that in, just so you know, when you type that in, it stays for about two seconds and then it's gone. But the next I'm one sorry, is grateful. I'm sorry, my mic is not on. Am I on now? 
Yeah, you're on now. Uh -huh. Oh, okay, there Hi. we go. All right, all right. So you were talking about um, people who are saying who, who people who say I'm waiting on God's answer. Right. Do you ever tell your clients? Like I have clients who say, well, we're, we're going to pray about it and we're going to wait and, until we know what God wants us to do. Do you ever, what do you say to them? Do you say that to them? Yeah. We, yeah. So you got to be careful with that because know, see, you're right. dealing with beliefs and you haven't, they haven't been through, you know, top performers. Sure, sure. So, so, you know, they, they think, and so many people believe that, you know, hey, I'm going to wait for what God says. Well, God is talking to you all the time with your emotions. So, right, right. It, it, so here's here's a way that you could share with them that you know something like this that um you know and you could do the assumptive you know discussion on well as you know god communicates through, through us the kingdom is within us and god communicates through us with our feelings and so my question to you is god's answer is do you feel good about buying this house because if you do that means god does and let's sign this contract. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Thank you so much. I get that a lot, actually. <laughs> yeah, 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 beautiful. Yeah, but but great one. But, you know, that one, that really is, is powerful, and it's a great question. And then, again, the answer channeled. I've never, ever said those words uh, before, you know, just all this godly stuff. But, yeah, isn't that a great way to, to answer? You know, we're going to pray about it and say, you know what, that's great. But, you know, as as but we all believe and know that, you know, the kingdom is within and, and that's our feelings on how we feel. So how do you feel? And if you feel good about it, then let's do it because God's already answering you. And, uh, you know, we don't need to do any prayer. And and just to be clear on what prayer means is, so most people think, well, I got to, you know, go in a quiet place and sit down, get on my hands and knees, fold my hands, and then, say, you know, dear God, I want to do this. Well, we're communicating with God every moment of every day, okay? And it's our thought that creates this emotion. So our emotions are communicating with God, and God is communicating with us emotionally all the time. So you don't have to be going into any quiet place or, you know, bowing your head or, you know, anything. And, and really, and even, you know, and again, I may be rubbing some of your beliefs a little here, but, you know, this bowing your head, you don't need to bow your head. That again, this is all old tradition, you know, and that we're sinners, and you know, and, and remember everything I just taught you on these laws. Say we're not sinners, right? And um, and and so so for for you to to recognize is you know we're we're born as creators. We're creators. That's what we are. We're not you know the sinners. And so to bow our heads, that no no no, hang. We we put our heads high. And we say, hey, you know, that I'm doing God's work here. You know, I made it in the image and likeness of God. How much more do we need to say, you know, to understand that who we are? We're made in the image and likeness of God. God created all this stuff. We're now the creators for God on, on doing this. So it's just an amazing thing. And, again, kind of lighten up on all that because some of your beliefs I can, you know, feel on, oh, boy, you know, I was taught this or whatever. And so you can uh, be light on it. But great question. Thank you, uh, Sherry, for uh, your input. And um, uh, let's see. Oh, there, my little baby. So this little guy, I think you guys can see my Facebook thing, but that's my grandson there. And it's, it's uh, Michelle, the wife. So, uh, yeah, my little grandson, he's a year old. And um, uh, so, okay, so, and so isn't that beautiful? You know, and being a, a grand, and by the way, for those of you that aren't grandparents yet, that there's a love. Um, for um, your grandchildren that is different than your love for your children or your spouse or, you know, anybody else. It's just this different, just amazing love. And so that's why this, this you know, like people say, oh, getting old, nobody likes that. I, I, you get, first of all, I'm not getting old. I'm getting younger all the time. But I love uh, getting to this age, this this miraculous golden age, yeah, I love that golden as far as, you know, yeah, it's golden. I'm on my golden light, lighted path. And then I'm able to experience these other things that I couldn't experience as a child, okay? I didn't have a child and then a great, uh, then a grandchild. Okay, and so then I can't wait for him to have a great grandchild. And I actually saw the sonogram on him, and, and then we saw he was a little boy, and I thought that's fantastic, you know, that that's where where that next child is coming from. And my first 
great-grandchild is coming from. And so anyways, okay, uh, back to uh, to uh, this, that. And so grateful. So grateful is a nice, you know, grateful is kind of like hope. You know, yeah, it's nice, grateful. But here's what grateful implies. To be grateful kind of implies like somebody else did this for me. And nobody's doing anything for you until you do for yourself, and then God is coming in and doing the work, if you will, uh, you know, for you. And so it's really this co-creative, um, this rendezvousing, you know, just rendezvousing with God and just enjoying and loving all this and trusting and knowing all is well and just getting better, you know. I just love, I'm so satisfied. And so write down this, that I am so satisfied right now where I I am, and I am so expectant of all the things getting better and better in my life. So I'm so satisfied where I am now and so expectant for the better life coming to me. Yeah, that's it, for the better life coming to me. So that's beautiful. So grateful again, it's above the positive thing, and it's great. And I do love grateful. You know, I love saying, oh, I'm so grateful. But uh, the, the word that actually replaces that is appreciate, and to be able to appreciate on, on uh, where, where we are. And, uh, and then the next one, positive expectancy and emotion. So, you know, that, that I positively expect my life to get better and better, my business to get better, my health to get better, for me to look younger, feel younger, thin, trim, and fit, you know, whatever. It's just all so fun that I expect miracles today. And send that out, you know, your light. So you're the light of the world now. And so the torch has been passed. And so, you know, send out your light. And I was sending some emails today. And, you know, it just came to me, these godly thoughts, and I, and I just, oh, miracles. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shower people with miracles today. So on emails, I was responding, um, you know, expect miracles today and expect lots of miracles today. And, and uh, so just be the light because that uplifts other people then, and then everything gets better and better and better. And then there's enthusiasm. And so get enthusiastic about you, about your life, about your business. This idea about EXP, put the fun back into the real estate. That, you know, just loosen up, enjoy, relax, have fun, and get enthused about who you are and where you're going. And get excited. And so this idea of excitement, it's this emotion that you do. And so whatever, you know, you've heard on, oh, that you're just, you know, so positive, and yeah, you bet. You bet I am, and 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 that's where I'm going to be. You can be wherever you want, and if you don't like positive or whatever, oh, this is just a teaching about you know positive thoughts or or on the positive side. No, this is a teaching about how life plays, and that how you can have life play better for you, and that yeah, positive you can use, allowing you could use. You know, there's a lot of words to include all of these. Yeah, I have positive expectancy. I'm enthusiastic. I'm excited I'm gonna have fun so say today it's it, command you're the commander you're the captain of your ship so you say you know what today I'm gonna have fun I want to have fun today and so this is an, I want to have fun today this is commanding it saying it this is how I want it I want to have fun today and then knowledge and experience and again when I say that it's from this point on your knowledge and experience and what I mean by that is your previous experience is really not the truth of who you are, or who other people are, other situations, or or whatever. That that and the reason why is everything has changed. So the experience I want you to hang on to, though, is to recognize. Wow, I called this for it. I wanted new referral partners, and then Sherry got five new uh, new referral partners that they're interviewing. Okay. Yeah, you're the chooser, and so they're one. One. So that's that was just mortgage. Hell, there's title you can do, and so you know, title you can't make any money off of, you know, whatever. But you sure can get. Um, uh, they sure know agents, and they, they have it. So those are your referral partners. Like if you're looking for agents, your referral partners, your vendors are some of the best you know, referral partners, and of course other agents and whatever, and, and, and your own thoughts, just ask them to come to you. I go on Facebook every night, and uh, 
Uh, and then I purposely, I'm, I'm aware, I said, I just want to be aware of agents. And then all of a sudden, like one, in fact, agent that I'm recruiting just popped up on uh, a Facebook message. And again, I don't know if you can see that on your screen or not, but um, that, uh, and they're, they're down in Houston. And so and I've known her for years, and we love each other, and she's been through top performers, and it's been all, you know, just great. And I've been down there with dinner with her and her boyfriend, and, and it's just super. And then I said, hey, I got to tell you about this uh, opportunity. And so, you know, um, uh, so I, I get them off of Facebook and, and, you know, my leads, but they're everywhere. Everything's everywhere. Money's everywhere. The uh, agents are everywhere. Everything that you want. So this idea about knowledge on uh, that, that the knowledge that I have taught you, because there is in, in you know, I, I've been to all kinds of schooling, okay, grade school and the junior school and high school and undergraduate and uh, graduate school and uh, PhD. And, you know, I've been to, through all of it, and none of it taught any of this. Okay, and so for us to recognize that now I can use this knowledge and then this experience on, yeah, I start, and I am starting to recognize that I call forth things when I call them forth that they start coming to me. And then the top of the line is for us to be who we really are, and that is empowered. And so just when you're empowered and you're saying, yeah, I'm growing this team, and I'm growing my business, and I'm growing my life, and I'm growing my health, and, and then love. And so just be thinking about, you know, this idea about love is, that's what I want. That's the emotion that I want. I want to put love in everything I do because it's the highest emotion you can have. And it, it aligns with God immediately. <coughs> and then God. And so, again, that word God has been, I, I actually try to stay away from it because uh, people have, you know, this misperception. They were brought up as kids. This, this God is, you know, some guy in a place called heaven. And he's got whatever, long gray hair and a big G on his shirt. He's down there pointing, and you know, and, and none of that is the case. You know, God is this beautiful, loving energy that is everywhere and everything, and included within us. And we are again made in the image and likeness of God. And then these uh, feelings of freedom. Your soul loves nothing more than feelings of freedom and feelings of love. And you really. You know, before you came here, you also were with your soul, and you had some things that you wanted to be able to experience here, and it was more joy and more expansion, more growth, and 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 uh, more freedom, and and so to live your soul's life, that's when you're just on a cloud. Have you ever been, you know, and and so hopefully some of you have been this way recently, like I had. Um, uh, in fact, one of you participants here in, in Fort Worth that, you know, said, uh, told me last week, said, I've never had a better week in my life. And so when you feel that, you know, when you're just feeling so good, that you're aligned with your soul. You're doing your soul's play, if you will. You're living your soul's life. So I want you to write down, I want to live my soul's life. And that is you and your soul together, your greater self. Because when you look down, your body is just a minuscule part of the amazing being that you are. And it's so much greater and grander than that. And that greater and granderness is your soul. And so you're sitting there with this amazing. And so that's the life that you want to live. And you can live it every day, no matter what contrast, the things you don't like come across that, uh, that you run into, that you brush up against, that you love that then too. And you just say, oh, that's great because I want this. And I can give you examples that are occurring in my life that are just unbelievable where some people would say, oh, my God, this is, you know, terrible. That, that people would say it's terrible. I go, it's just great. It's birthing these new ideas on, on you know, the things that, that I want. And then way far more things. You know, I have little contrasts. Always will. I'll always have contrast. You're going to always have contrast. But I'm focused on all just the amazing, what the, the ideas and thoughts that the contrast gave me. And then appreciation of all the things that are happening just fantastic in my life. And then this idea of being worthy and that you are worthy, and you are loved and supported and guided every moment of every day. Now you know where, within you, 
that, that your feelings, that that's the communication system. And then the state of appreciation, to appreciate God and your soul and you and all the people that have been before you, walked before you, that uh, because they brought us, they helped us to get to this point. And then to recognize that you have it all and you have all the resources that you want in order to give you everything you want to be, do, and have. And this, my friends, is a state of allowing. And when you're in a state of allowing, instead of thinking you got to do all the stuff, you got to figure out how to do it, that, you know, remember doing, you keep on doing, 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 and you end up getting do-do. And so just get away from that and just think when you have inspired action that you want to do it. It makes me feel good to go call this person. It makes me feel good. And so just start doing that. I have a, um, uh, a list of, oh, I don't know, 15,000 agents in Texas, and uh, and I communicate to them every week, and and uh, at least once a week, if not more, and um, and so I took that list and I said, hey, show me who you know who opens the most, you know, on these, and then I'll start calling them, and. Um, and you know, I started calling a few people, and you know what? Just didn't feel good. I just didn't, and so I stopped doing it. And uh, and I and because I'm in the state of allowing this pure state of allowing of hey, it didn't feel good. God, tell me I'm not going to do it. That I, this opens up the space now, this spiritual space, so I can be shown the easy way. And so the easy way was. Um, it's just one of the many, you know, there's infinite number of easy ways, but there was a guy on LinkedIn and, um, and I just liked the way he said, Hey, you know, thanks. And I'm hooked up to, I don't know, 5,000 people or something. And, and, uh, and so I said, Hey, cool. And you're in real estate. And he said, yeah, whatever. Well, he's not a real estate agent. He has a, a way to increase retention of clients or agents. And, um, and I said, what's your list? He said, well, 4,500 agents. So I said, do you have low-hanging fruit where, you know, you're really good for, oh, yeah. So the first guy he introduces me to is the guy that's in Houston, uh, in Salt Lake City, that uh, now we're growing Salt Lake City from. So there's no way I could have ever figured out that. I got 5,000 LinkedIn people. I, I'd have to call 5,000 people and probably never get to this guy in that type of conversation, okay? Instead, I just let it go. I stopped uh, doing the call, and I gave it. And so I didn't need patience at all because I have this trust and this knowing God's going to bring me what I want. He does not work. I don't have to do squat <laughs> other than think about it and stay focused on that and not the opposite of it. Because it's like this concierge in the sky. You know, at Four Seasons, I was at the other, I don't know, a couple a couple months ago, I guess. And, and uh, I mean, this concierge, man, they did everything. They set up everything for the massage and the eating out and, you know, all of this stuff. I mean, it was just amazing. They did, you know, absolutely everything. And I went, oh, that, that concierge. That's like the same concierge I have, except mine is even better. <laughs> and it's God, and we'll take all this energy and bring people and circumstances and situations and, and, and everything, thoughts, everything right into me. And so this beautiful state of allowing, and that's where you want to do. So I would write down that um, you can actually do the present tense of this now because you're graduates that I am in a pure state of allowing. I am in a pure state of allowing. It's not that I even want it anymore. I am it. And so just start saying to yourself, I am in a pure state of allowing. And it's this subtle, loving, gentle, kind energy. And as you go into that space, that's where God rests. So where is God? Right there in that space, in that emotional space where you're at. And then you can feel and feel right now the presence of God within you, there for you, loving you, supporting you, guiding you. Always there, always have, and always will. Amen, huh? Yeah. So let's talk about expanding our emotions, since emotions are that I want to go higher and higher, okay? Take me higher. And so I want to just get higher and higher and expand my emotion. So you can just ask. And so I ask to expand, first of all, my imagination. 
I want to expand my thoughts to expand my emotions. And then I ask to go beyond where thought has ever been. So I start with thought here because remember, your thought creates the emotion. So you ask to expand your imagination. I want my imagination to be expanded. You don't have to figure out on how that's going to happen. Just ask for your imagination to expand, and it's going to expand. Then ask to have your thoughts go beyond where your thoughts or anyone's thoughts have ever been before. And that's where creation things and where things are created, and that's the, the Bill Gates and, you know, the Facebook. And, I mean, where do those come from? Those thoughts come from them being aligned and not going, what, Gates, you know, dropped out of Harvard, I think, that, that uh, you know, everybody was saying, oh, stay in Harvard and you'll earn a lot of money. You know, he wasn't interested in it. And then people couldn't expand their imagination. He went to, I think it was Xerox, and, and Gates went to Xerox, and, and they had this little thing, and, uh, and, and Xerox said, yeah, we, uh, you know, we have no use for this little thing. And Gates said, well, I'll take it. And they go, oh, you could just have it. You don't have to pay for the rights, the patent, you know, nothing. You could just have it. Well, that little thing was called a mouse. <laughs> and so the mouse, Xerox, because they didn't expand their imagination, where he was expanding his imagination on how he could do that. And then ask to go beyond where your feelings have been before. And so becoming a master at manifesting and so allow yourself to be led by your emotions. And I want to take us back. And in fact, I'm going to give you this analogy. And so, so here's kind of, and again, the thought just came and this, you know, godly thought to share with you. But I, I want you, and I brought it up yesterday in, in Top Performers with Austin that, uh, but it was just amazing that, um, so you, this idea about patience and about, you know, why isn't stuff, where's my stuff? You know, when you ask where's your stuff, here's what's happening there is it's as though you plant seeds. So let's say it's a sunflower seed, okay? So let's get a pot. Just imagine right now. This will help you expand your imagination, by the way. So let's get a pot right now. And so put a pot on the table. I want you to put it with real fertile uh, soil, and so, you know, the ground soil, the dirt, and put dirt in there. And now I want you to dig a little hole, and I want you to put the little sunflower seed. So now this is just a little sunflower seed, right? And I want you to put that in the hole, and I want you to cover it up. Now, what happens with us is, like you and I know, as long as we give sunshine and water to that pot and that dirt, that that seed in it will start to grow. And so what is our sunshine? So first of all, what's the seed? The seed is our thought. And so when you just planted that sunflower seed, that imagine now that you planting seeds about building your business, about increasing your health, about having deep, meaningful relationships. And, and so all of those things, those are those seeds. So you're just going around and you're planting these seeds. Your sunshine and your water, that that's your good feeling thoughts. Okay, so it's good feeling thoughts that lead to good feelings. Okay, and that's your sunshine and your water. And But what has happened before to us is we went back, so go back to that pot, and so let's say you wait a week, and then you say, you know, I'm taking up that damn seed because it didn't grow yet, and I'm going to see what's going on. So you go into that pot, and you dig up that dirt, and you go get the seed, and you're looking at this seed saying, what the hell, Where, what's going on? Let's become a sunflower. And then you put it back in to the pot. Well, what happens? You just slow down the process. It's those same resistant thoughts that you've had that literally take that seed and take it out of the ground and looking at the ground saying, where's my stuff? 
And so these resistant thoughts is you taking that seed out and not allowing it to grow. So I want you to imagine now a field because you're not going to be that way anymore. You're not going to think resistant thoughts on that scale that we just had discussed. Instead, you're going to have allowing thoughts and know that the seeds that you plant in your mind, in your heart, in your soul of the things that you want, that imagine that those seeds now are this beautiful, they're sunflower seeds, and imagine a whole field filled with beautiful sunflowers. And that, my friends, is expanding your imagination and looking at the power that you have to be able to have all of those seeds generated through your thoughts and all of the sunshine and water required of those good feeling thoughts with those good feelings in order to plant a whole field of sunflowers. And so that's your abundance. And, and hold that picture in your mind. On, that's what you're doing. We're farmers now. We just became farmers, and we're loving it. And we don't have to touch any dirt. We don't have to go to any field. We just go right into our minds and then right into our hearts and right into our good feelings of all the things that we want. So allow yourself to be led by your emotions. And so say, I let go of my mind and beliefs and allow the impulsive signals from my source, from God, to guide me and lead me to even better feelings, thoughts, and manifestations of what I want. And so with that, you are now graduates of top performers. Your success steps are complete your EQ assessment, which I will be sending you this afternoon. That listen to this recording. And so if you can listen to this recording at least six times, you're going to really, really get this and embrace and just love all of this because it was just made for your ears, for your mind, for your heart. And then do your joy shop every morning. And it's just a great way to do that. And if anything, you can just sit in bed, you know, before you get out of bed and just do your joy shop there. And then write afterwards, you know, you could, could write. Pause, breathe deeply, and then ask. Ask for the, what you want. Think good feeling thoughts and only think about what you want. And finally, care most about how you feel. So I thank all of you for coming. Uh, this has just been an amazing experience. That uh, there's a few things that if you want, again, if you want, you know, different joy shops, let me know. If you want my time management system, it's a a manual, uh, you know, hardcover paper time management system. But it is just awesome in making sure that you uh, will save you about three weeks a year. Uh, you can do coaching with me, and I have a coaching application if you want to uh, do that. And so I have absolutely loved being with you guys. That if you do have a, uh, if you want that leads program of mine with the 18% close rate, we are going to have one more training next week. That was just announced actually this morning that I found out. So if you'd like to make about $9,000 more per month, let me know. And uh, with that, that I thank all of you. I love you guys. It's been great. And uh, any comments or uh, uh, questions before we leave? Okay. Thank you, Barbara. Appreciate it, girl. And I uh, love you guys.